Well, how are we doing everybody and welcome to Russell Heritage Golf. Today is kind of the concluding video on the hip functionality. I've already talked about pressure, um, where we talk about the idea of trying to use the ground. Today we're talking much more about functionality, which basically means it explains why things potentially go wrong. Getting stuck into it, let's talk about the posture first, right? If you stood up nice and straight, you'd find it very comfortable to do things like rotate your hips and your shoulders going back and forth, right? Now, if you kind of, I don't know, go one way or another, let's say you try to ab crunch, which basically means you tuck your hips more underneath you and you try and create the same rotation, all of a sudden it becomes impossible. Same if you kind of over-exaggerate sticking your bum out and you try and turn, all of a sudden you can't. So actually the posture is something that's really important. Now for some golfers you'll have limitations because obviously you might have slight problems with your posture anyway, which will restrict your movement, it will, right? But the point is, is that probably the most important part to understand the next time you get on the range is to make sure that you actually create a bend of the hips first so you feel like the belt buckle is pointing more down to the ball, then introducing a little bit of knee flex. Like to talk about then in the pressure video, you want to have your kind of width of stance roughly about on the line of the hips. So if I was to draw a line vertically through each hip bone, it would fall on the inline of the ankles. From this sort of position there, then all of a sudden you're kind of good and ready to go. Now for golfers who generally struggle with things like sliding and kind of drifting forward, it's generally going to be things like potentially a lack of flexibility is true, but also you're probably going to struggle because the posture is in a bad place. So if I kind of tuck my hips underneath me and I try and try to create a rotation, it makes me drift forward because basically my pelvis isn't in a neutral position for me to be able to trigger a rotation. So that's what I mean. It's an important thing because actually the posture can lead to quite a lot of compensations very early in your golf swing. Okay, I see this one loads, talking about the takeaway. I see it loads where a lot of golfers get very self-obsessed with things like keeping the club on plane and uh, they'll draw loads of videos and I'll go down the driving range and I'll see all the kind of canes propped up and they're trying to get the club moving along it. Generally speaking, the reason why you can't keep the club on the plane in the backswing is because of how you're moving the hips, right? Now what you're supposed to do is once I'm in my posture, I should turn into my hip. Okay, so I feel like as I'm turning, I'm actually putting pressure in towards my hip, right? If I do this, this gives me the ability to kind of correctly rotate the pelvis, rotate the upper, and has a positive impact on how my shoulders are functioning as well. If I turn over the hip, which means that I'm moving over onto the actual leg itself, then what you can start to see is that the club will start to get under plane. So if you're a golfer who's been swinging the club massively under plane and you can't get rid of it, no matter how much you think like you're taking it out in front of you, there's a very good chance it's actually how you're moving the hips. You know, if you move over that leg, I know I'm dramatizing it for the point of this video, it's, that's exactly the reason why you'll generally be struggling. So you need to understand that in the takeaway, actually it's really important to understand you're supposed to turn in towards the hip itself, not over the hip, okay? Just double check that when you're at home, just kind of doing a few little movements that you feel like your kind of takeaway and first part of your golf swing is more of this sort of rotation led, right? Now, like I've talked about before, even if you were to shift pressure on the outside part of your foot, you would still, by the time you get to the takeaway, be turning in the same manner into the hip, not over the hip. Some people may not get that, but it's an important thing to understand. Next time you video your swing, this is why things like your head will start to drift in the first move as well get that rotation into the hip and it will start to make a massive improvement in the takeaway. Okay, what happens in the backswing position is that basically as we turn our hips against the square foot position, you create an activation and a load in this sort of hip area here, right? Also, by consciously putting pressure down in towards the ground, you not only do you start to trigger the correct muscles that are actually helping you trigger a rotation, you're basically immobilizing this side. That's important to understand and we'll come back to that when I talk about the transition in a moment. The choice that you have would be dependent on how much hip rotation you have in the backswing, which would change the visual as to how it looks. My point is, is that as long as you're pressure loading and you can arguably get your shoulders to a nine degree rotation, then you're absolutely fine. And what I mean by pressure loading is I feel like my foot wants to spin out from beneath me and I can feel an activation in the top of my hip area here. What you'll find is that if you're less flexible, you might have to feel like you have to try and increase the rate of rotation on the hips a little bit more to help you get to 90 degree rotation of the shoulders. If you choose to do that, that's fine. All that will happen is that your hip will move further away from your ankle and your right leg will start to look straighter. As long as you retain the pressure underneath this side and you can feel it here, then that's absolutely fine and suffice to do. It's potentially arguably harder to stay in posture that way, but to be honest, unless you try it, you're never gonna really know if it works for you or not. Okay, so as I've already talked about, you would have to pressure load this side because basically what we have to do to initiate the start of the downswing, and I'm bypassing in this video this sort of momentum shift. 
I talked more about the kind of lateral movement in the golf swing um, on the previous video when I talked about shifting pressure. All I'm going to kind of concentrate on now is the importance that as you initiate your downswing, you need to pull this hip back. Okay. Now again, one of the biggest problems with most amateur golfers is the kind of over the top move or the kind of early hip extension. Right. Both of those movements are created because you're not correctly loading this side. Now, what I mean by this is similar earlier when I asked you to stand up straight and you kind of rotate it, right? So if you turn your right hip back, your left one comes forward and vice versa. Now in the golf swing, if we did the same movement and I turn this one back and then I try and pull this one back and this one comes forward, we have a slight problem because you're going to be swinging over the top or you're going to have to compensate by throwing the club down. All that matters is that by, the, by loading in towards this side, it basically means because you're putting pressure underneath it, there is very little weight on this side and it means that this one can start to come back. Like I say, when I talked about the momentum shift, yes, you're going to be shifting pressure back in towards this side, but really, although there is going to be lateral movement in your goal swing because you're re-establishing pressure back onto the lead foot, you're still going to make sure that it always feels very rotational-led. You don't really want to start sliding and shifting all your weight too quickly over onto this side because you're going to start to get stuck. So the whole point of this movement in the first move is pulling this back is it gives you a separation which basically means that my hips are working at a faster rate so that I can kind of get the club back onto plane. Now, the interesting topic when it comes to plane is that basically the more rotation you create on the lower body, so you can see the way I keep pulling my hips more and more around, so for example, with somebody like Dustin Johnson, what it starts to do is it starts to create a lateral bend. What a lateral bend means is that there's a shortening in terms of the gap between my right shoulder and right hip is starting to kind of feel more like a side crunch due to the rotation increase against my upper body. The benefit of this is it helps aid create a shallowing, so you can see the way the club starts to shallow out. It means that the elbow can drive more in front of my right hip, and it means that I can hold on to lag for longer. So there are benefits to it, right? But at the same token, it might not feel the most comfortable move for you to do. It's absolutely fine, similar more to my kind of swing. As I start, I create a separation. You can see the way the shaft starts to work a little bit more through the shoulder. Now this basically means that you're swinging on kind of more of a one plane angle. So rather than going up, coming down on a different plane to come back onto the same plane, you're kind of traveling more up and down the same plane line. I'm going to talk about that when it comes to the release a little bit later. But the important thing to understand is that you're pressure loading this side so that you can open up this side. If you can't get this, then like I said earlier, this is why your hip extend, do things like slide or you'll naturally just swing over the top. You have to start feeling like you're pulling this back without excessive amount of weight on it because as soon as there's weight on it, it's very hard for it to be able to rotate. But we're roughly at the time, by the, by the time you've kind of squared off this foot, right? And then by the time you get to left arm horizontal, right? Because you've got to remember this is obviously happening very, very quick, this sort of transitional area. But by the time you're back at lead arm horizontal, which is a good reference point if you video your swing, you should re-establish weight back in towards this side, but also that your pelvis should be parallel towards target. So if you were to draw a line on the back of this hip, this left hip should have re-established itself back on the same sort of plane. It's an important thing because without that, like I said, it's one of the biggest problems. Now, as we get to this sort of stage, you're going to carry on rotating. Now, what's important, in my opinion, is that you don't post up over this left-hand side because you're going to get stuck. You have to keep feeling like you're pulling this lead hip back. Now, as I keep pulling this lead hip back, my right hip, as I mentioned earlier now, because it's not, no longer got any pressure on it, is going to start coming forward. This is why you end up kind of seeing the professionals with a huge amount of connection between the right elbow and the right hip. Now, if you'd managed to create a shallowing, right, you're going to be in a position that looks like so. If you kind of had to come more down a single axis, you might look a little bit kind of indifferent, right, in terms of the relationship of the lag. The reality is now, as you start to kind of straighten this leg, right, so you're going to start firing your glutes, which means this leg is going to start straightening. It allows, as I've mentioned before in the impact video, it allows the thigh to end up being more forward facing. Because to be honest, if you try and execute a golf swing against a square leg, you're only going to get so far in rotation. The reason why we see the pros really move this way is because basically they need to be forward facing towards the target. And that's why this leg will have to create a straightening. The thing in the golf swing, right, and when I start hitting a few shots, I've got a couple of tools which I think are useful, is that you have to time this with a release as well. So a rotational movement is going to be faster, okay, rather than creating a huge lateral movement. So a rotation is kind of working at a constant speed, but you still have to time the club face and the hit. Now, I will start talking on the channel about things like ball flights, divot patterns in the future. 
But I did also talk a little bit about relatively recently how you actually square up the club face. And basically what happens, if I kind of whiz back through the movements again, you'll swing up to the top, you'll separate, right? As you kind of keep bringing the arm down, at this stage, once you get to left arm horizontal, the shaft at the moment is pointing down towards the ground. It will start to change its direction. So you can see the way now it's pointing more towards the target. Now, roughly by the time you get to this position, you're going to have to down cock the club, right? And that basically means it's what's known as an honor deviation, which is like your casting sort of motion. And you'll have to do a casting motion with a degree of rotation around that left forearm as well to be able to get the club face square at impact. You have to do it unless you have a very strong grip. Even if you create flexion, I've talked about it before, you still have to create an element of down cocking to get the club on the back of the ball. So what you need to kind of do is that as you start to create this straightening, you have to understand that at the same time, you have to allow the club to release down towards the back of the ball. And that's something that's important to understand because without that, and if you start pulling this back, you're gonna to start to feel like if you're holding onto this angle, you're gonna get lost. You have to allow the club to release as you swing through. Then it just comes towards the finish position. Basically, if you get the whole sequence of events correct, what you'll start to notice is that, as you can see, my thigh is now pointing towards the target, my hips are pointing towards the target, and the shoulders are as well, right? Those are kind of key things to identify. If you get the posture wrong and you can't load and then you slide, you're never gonna finish correctly anyway. So if you're somebody who kind of feels like, oh, it's because you're tight and all the rest of it, it's generally not true. We'll talk about what golfers should do if you're less flexible, but it still generally means you can rotate and move pretty well, right? You just need to understand how to. Coming back to the concept of the release and the idea of training aids like this is that they help you do things like create a sense of lag, create a sense of changing direction, but they also help you create a tempo. And the Orange Whip is probably one of the greatest training aids of all time, right? and you kind of swing back, you'll feel the shaft change its direction so you can see as it completes, I'm changing the hip direction as I start, right? As you're generally doing this, it will feel more powerful, right? One, because of the weight and the way that it's distributed, right? So it's cleverly distributed in terms of the heavy components and light components of the shaft, so it can really give you a sense of feel as to when in terms you would release the club. Now, like I said, the term release on the golf club is really when you're starting to do things like straighten off the golf club and release it down towards the back of the ball. The problem with this training aid and the reason why I've kind of used this one before and is the kind of G-force training aid, right? The reason why is that although it's a very similar product in its nature, you can actually hit balls with it, right? So it's very easy to start swinging the orange whip trainer around and you get no real concept of how to get the club face square at the point of impact. It'll always feel powerful because it's exactly like doing baseball swings. If you shift pressure and you just rotate, of course it's gonna feel more powerful. The difficulty in golf is that you actually have to get the club face square at the point of impact. So that's why I like this. Now this is featured on the channel before and you can hit a few shots because basically you have to understand that you need to allow the club to release to be able to get the club face square on the back of the ball. If you don't release it correctly, then inevitably it's going to start to flag up in the ball flight. The also good news is that they've just released the driver version of it as well. And to be honest with you, I've used it with a lot of customers and it gives you a great sense of how to be able to get the club face square. I'm a massive advocate of just getting people to function well. I'm not too concerned about a certain method or how it looks on the way back. As long as it's matching, then I'm generally pretty content with what an individual's doing. I spend much more of my time helping them understand how to do what we've discussed in these recent videos as to use the ground and rotational movements. The thing that's really hard to do is not necessarily to help people do this, it's just to help them to still get the club face and get that feeling for timing and rhythm. Which is why, like I keep saying, these training aids are really good for this because everybody's gonna be slightly different. Like I talked about earlier, certain golfers are gonna kind of drive the elbow more and create more of a shallowing, therefore you'll get the feeling that you're releasing the club later. Other golfers are going to swing more down on a one-dimensional plane, so you're potentially going to get the feeling that you're releasing the club slightly earlier. It's difficult really to kind of give somebody a precise exact point as to when you'd release it because obviously it's being released through the centrifugal force of the golf swing that we create working in a circular motion. But these training aids do give you some feedback if you're not hitting it straight. We generally suggest that you're not releasing it at the correct point and you're not getting that timing.
point of this video is really to discuss the importance of how the hips pretty much dictate all the movement in the golf swing, especially if you want to kind of swing correctly. There are huge variances in the golf swing from how things look flat, up, driving elbow, shallowing, more on plane, different release, flexion, not flexion, rotation in centre, finishing over the left hand side. But generally the laws that we have to offer is things like how we use the ground and that the hips generally have to work within accordance of the things that I've discussed. You won't see many PGA Tour golfers creating excessive lateral movement kind of sliding around. They're all kind of moving laterally to apply pressure back in towards the ground. That's the important thing that I want you to get out of this little series of videos. So as ever, hopefully you've enjoyed this little series over the last couple of weeks on everything hips. It's definitely something that I'm going to come back to and talk about because every time I kept thinking about the content and best way of portraying it for everybody, I kept thinking of additional things to start talking about, especially the differences between driver and irons and the weight shift. But I think the general kind of conclusion is that over this video and the conclusion on the pressure video is that you would have enough information to understand how you're supposed to move the hips in the golf swing and it's something we can come back to in the future. Hopefully you enjoy the video, always appreciate a thumbs up and a like. Remember it's absolutely free to press that subscribe button, press the little bell icon means you'll receive notifications every time a new video comes out. What's also free is to send the swings into the channel. In the description below is where you'll see the links to the social media pages. That's basically where you can send swings in. I annotate over the videos for about 60 seconds or so and then I kind of publish them onto the social media platforms where we can all learn together and the individual who sends their swings in will give a little bit of advice but also what content is going to be best to be working for you. Catch up with you again soon.